Well, regardless of who you voted for in the election, what do you think are some of the top challenges the president now faces in his next term. And we took that to Facebook and we got a lot of response. Yeah. This one from Joseph. The biggest issue by far is bringing us together as a nation, bring us back together as a country, and many other things will start falling in place. Betty Dean said economic, health, welfare, get our small businesses booming again, get rid of or at least change some aspects of Obamacare, make it more tough to get on welfare. For most people, welfare should be temporary and not permanent. And then Carolyn said, Economic, economic, economic. <laughs> Get small businesses going with real incentives rather than penalizing them with new taxes. All right, see if you agree with Bill. He wrote, nothing will get accomplished until both parties decide to work together. Yeah. How about that? It is interesting. Now that election day is over, people in Sussex County are gearing up for another big event on the calendar, return day. It's held every couple of years, two days after the election, to put it simply, it's tradition. Demarvis Brian Spiros is in downtown Georgetown where the festivities are taking place tomorrow. What's going on, Brian? Well, Jimmy and Lisa, if you take a look right now, traffic is swarming here in the circle in Georgetown, but that won't be the story tomorrow. People will be swarming in this area, getting ready to celebrate return day. And as a matter of fact, preparations are underway here in the circle as we speak for tomorrow. Now, here's a little bit of history about return day. It's not really known exactly when it started, but it's believed it could have been as early as 1792. And that's because the year prior to that, the county seat here in Sussex County was changed from Lewis to Georgetown. And basically, here's how everything worked. People from Sussex County would come to Georgetown to cast their vote in the election and would then return to the area two days later to hear the official results of the election. Now, obviously, a lot has changed since then with the invention of the radio, TV, the Internet, and so on and so forth. Now, I want to introduce you to a woman by the names of Rosalie Walls. You are a lifelong res resident here in Georgetown. Yes, and I'm told a wealth of knowledge when it comes to return day. I hope so. <laughs> so the first thing I'm going to ask you is obviously a lot has changed now um, with the way we get our election results. As we saw last night, it's instantaneous. But what is it about return day that still hundreds of years later, and people just have to mind the traffic going by, hundreds of years later, people are still celebrating return day. Why is that, you think? Well, I think Sussex County especially is, is so steeped in history and in tradition. And this year we are celebrating our 200 years of return day. So obviously it's the history and tradition that keeps it going. Yes, I think so. Um, there's many aspects of return day. One of them is, is actually called burying the hatchet that involves the politician. Explain, uh, politicians, explain what that's all about and the significance of it. Yes, sir. Well, uh, we have the Sussex County chair people of uh, four different parties, and they actually take a hatchet, bury it in a box of sand. The sand's been brought from Lewis because that was our first county seat. Right. And they actually bury the hatchet in that sand. It's supposed to get rid of all the bad things they've said about each other during the campaigning. Um, not sure that that always works, but we certainly hope so. And and they just put everything that they've said in that sand and it, it hopefully goes away. Put it all aside and move forward. The other major part of return day, of course, is the parade. Um, the parade is going to be going on tomorrow. Explain the significance of that. Okay, well, um, the parade is actually going to start at 1.30 tomorrow. And we invite everybody, of course, all the uh, elected officials, uh, the, the newly elected ones and the ones that are currently in place, will be arriving here in Georgetown to ride in the parade. Some will be riding in carriages, and some will be in convertibles or antique vehicles. And then, of course, we all have the floats and the, and the uh, beauty queens and the bands. Right now, we have 10 bands scheduled to come, and uh, Delaware State is going to be performing here at 1130 on the circle. So we just encourage everybody to come. And, of course, the ox race is a, another thing that's it's, it's going to be going on to here. Be put on the spit right so now. So certainly a lot of stuff going on tomorrow, and everyone sure should come is. on down. So we thank you for talking with us today. Thank we appreciate you, it. And good luck with everything. Well, thank so, you very much. All right, thank there you, you go. Time. So all preparations are underway for return day. Now, Rosalie, as you said, mentioned those horse-drawn carriages, and we're going to be back a little later in the show to show you what it takes to get one of them ready for the parade. And we actually got to ride on one, and you're going to learn a lot of great stuff about those horse and carriages. Trust me, you don't want to miss it. So, Jimmy, Lisa, we're going to hang out here in Georgetown. We'll send it back to you guys in the studio.
exciting times. I stayed right. Yeah. That's going to be I a little bit See, the wind is picking today. up in there. Yeah, it is. And again, the return day celebration kicks off tonight. Circling Georgetown is going to close in less than an hour now. Uh, taking the Delaware Electric Cooperative stage, it's going to be Skinny Leg Pete, Big Hat No Cattle, and tonight's final act is going to be the Funsters. Then tomorrow, activities are going to begin at 9 o'clock in the morning. Of course, that parade is scheduled to start at 1.30 in the afternoon. Well, uh, this morning, I was looking at the, the morning Cape Gazette mm -hmm. up in Sussex County, and they had a story that really caught my attention. It's about five generations of one family heading to the polls yesterday. 103-year-old oh Letha Sturgis, she's there sitting down in the chair. Um, she went to the polls yesterday with five generations of her family. Pamela Coleman is Sturgis's great-granddaughter. She organized the trip to the polls. Now, Coleman said Sturgis has always been active in church but she hasn't always made it to the polls yeah. but that changed in 2008 because she wanted to um, make history by uh, voting in the first african-american president so she made it a priority again yesterday so five, whole five generations. generations head into the polls wow that's pretty cool that's terrific mm -hmm. um, kind of breaking away from the whole election thing here for just a second um, you may remember back in september this cell phone video of a woman who drives up on the sidewalk to get around a stopped oh, school bus. Yeah. Remember that? Take a look at this. We got it right here for you. Um, the driver had done it enough times. She's going to be coming to this silver Jeep. Yeah. Uh, done it enough that the bus driver finally had a cell phone ready to video her doing it. Now remember, this, the, the bus is stopped with the lights flashing. Sheena Harden's mother said Sheena took the sidewalk around the bus because it took too long for the bus to pick up a handicapped student. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Um, I, uh, her, her license has been, she pleaded guilty, yes I did it, her license has been suspended, she's paying, there she is, she's paying $250 in fines, and, this is my favorite part, mm -hmm. the judge says she has to stand on that same street for at least an hour, for at least two days next week, wearing this sign that says, only an idiot would drive on the sidewalk to avoid the school bus. <laughs> I just wanted to bring that up, because yeah. that infuriated me when I first heard that story and and her mom's defending her and her mom's defending her yeah well they were taking too long she was in a hurry <laughs> I'm I better stop while I'm ahead they're huh? in jail okay Just take uh, your car there's a website out mm -hmm. it's called dog hairs now let me spell it for you d-o-g-h-e-i-r-s like airs airs yeah. dog airs well dog owners from around the world are contributing their photos and here's what they're doing. They're taking a shot that they took maybe 10 years ago with them and their dog, Aww. and they're doing another one in the same. A they're, then they're, and now kind of thing. A then and now kind yeah. of thing. It's, they're recreating the same pose. Uh, there's a section on the website called Dogs Are Family for Life. Look at that top to bottom. Aww. Isn't that a great shot? That I is love a that great one. Shot. Now, if you've got your own side by side picture of you and your dog, I love that one too. Still in bed. <laughs> 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 um, you can send it to the uh, Dog Airs site or to uh, its family Facebook page. Dogs are family for life. I have a bunch of those for my kids. Yeah, do you? Yeah. Do you side by side? side well, I mean, I, don't, I haven't put them side by side, but. I'm like you, I need to do that. Yeah. I got the same thing, but I haven't, I haven't done that. Okay, are you ready for a pop quiz? Oh, no, no one said oh, anything you're, about you're a pop good, quiz. Oh, you're good with this, it's, it's easy. The whole presidential thing going on, uh, you know, presidents always have dogs or pets or something in the White House, and for some reason, it always seems to dominate the news. Yeah, For the yeah. longest time. Here's Bo the, and all yeah, the dog the president got and blah, blah, blah. So here's a pop quiz for you. We're going to show you a picture of Bo, the presidential dog, mm -hmm. the Obama's presidential dog. And I've got a question for you. Bo is a purebred Anyone? What? Anyone? Do you guys know? Water Who said dog? that? Burmese water dog is exactly right. Ah. Wow. That was very good. Okay. Ding, 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 ding. Question number two. Which president kept, among other pets, a guinea pig <laughs> named Fighting Bob Evans and a one-legged rooster. Okay, now I'm, I'm going to make this multiple choice for you, make it a little easier. Was it Thomas Jefferson? Was it Teddy Roosevelt? Was it Bill Clinton? Or was it Rutherford B. Hayes? Anybody? Wild guess? Roosevelt. Roosevelt? You're exactly right! Ah. Holy cow, two for two for these guys. Okay. Question number three, your last question. I got to stump you on this one. The last president to keep cows on the White House lawn <laughs> was it Thomas Jefferson, Barack Obama, George H.W. Bush, or William Howard Taft? Taft. I heard, I heard Jefferson. Was there no Taft? Taft. 
That's what I heard. You guys are like way too smart wow. for me. You're exactly right. That's who it was. It was Taft. Yeah, because you know, if, if they had cows on the White House lawn, if Barack Obama had cows now, we would hear about we it. We would know about it. We would know. Bo would not be in the news. And, yeah, Bo would be. There would be no Mo Bo. No Bo. <laughs> Want to say that? Sorry. Well, still to come on Delmarva Life, do you ever go home and wonder, how did I ever accumulate so much stuff? Up next, simple steps to declutter if your mess is causing you stress. And we're all about making your life easier today, from less stress to cutting down your hours in the kitchen. How one simple appliance can save you a ton of time. Delmarva Life, life at its best here on Delmarva. Delmarva Life is brought to you by Sussex County Federal Credit Union guiding you to your financial future. Peninsula Regional Medical Center, honored to serve the entire Delmarva Peninsula since 1897, and your local York and Mitsubishi dealers.